LA Chargers seven round full mock draft 2023 version let's get straight into this thing with the 21st overall pick i have the los angeles Chargers selecting jalen hyatt wide receiver from tennessee this team desperately needs a deep threat to match up with keenan allen and mike williams and not only just that they need a guy that can come in and can be a for sure number one wide receiver if one of or both of those guys go out mike Williams and Keenan Allen both missed a lot of time last year and it hindered their offense by a ton. But it's one thing that Justin Herbert hasn't been able to do with this team just yet, and that's take consistent shots down the field. A guy like Jalen Hyatt can do that for you. Jalen Hyatt has 67 catches for 1,267 yards, 15 receiving touchdowns, 19 yards a catch is a extreme deep threat and is amazing with those deep route running abilities. If you're running a crossing pattern and you have a safety or a linebacker matched up on him, nine times out of ten, he's going to make you pay. It's going to open up this offense and you're going to have guys like Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen all benefit from it and also guys like DeAndre Carter on the back end. He will be an amazing fit for, for this team and he can also be a number one wide receiver for this team if they choose to move on from Mike Williams or Keenan Allen in the future. Like I said, he can slide in if one of those guys get hurt, but if they have their entire team healthy, this man right here can be similar to what Tyreek Hill was for the Kansas City Chiefs for all of those years. That is how fast and athletic he is. Not saying he's as fast as Tyreek Hill, but he will take a safety away and you will have to put one-on-one -on -one coverage with those two monsters on the outside of the perimeter and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. With the 54th overall pick, I have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Darnell Wright, tackle from Tennessee. Standing at 6'6", 342 pounds, this is a can't-miss tackle if he slides this far, and I believe that he will. This is a guy that can come in, play a long slide, Jamar Slayer, or anyone that you have in this offensive line. Now, this team had Rashawn Slater go out early last season, and it hindered their entire offensive line. Getting a guy like Darnell Wright that can come in and play plug and play at any tackle position will help, but he is better at the right tackle position. He played 829 snaps. He only allowed five quarterback hurries, two quarterback hits, zero sacks, and he's amazing right tackle. The only thing with him is that he is a bit step slow. He doesn't match up very well with those speed rushers just yet, but as the season went on, he did get better. So you look at a guy like Darnell Wright, the footwork is a bit sluggish, but he's more of a power tackle. He's a guy that's going to stand up right and secure the edge and block the edge against physical defensive ends. When they come against those speed rushers, he may struggle a little bit because his technique's a little bit off but if they can get an offensive line coach in there and they can coach him up you can be looking at a future premier tackle for this team and he can also slide in at any position like i said before with the 85th overall pick i have the los angeles Chargers selecting kobe wooden defensive end from auburn standing at 6'5 284 pounds is a straight speed rusher that wins with power this man is phenomenal off the edge he only had six sacks and that's because they start double teaming him and they start triple teaming him and chip blocking him with tight ends that is extremely rare to see in college he had 35 total pressures on the season 24 quarterback hurries and five quarterback hits he was always in the backfield to also stop the run and try to be disruptive in the run game if it was not for those helps when it came to one-on-ones he was one-on-one -on -one with a tackle like he will be with this team just in case joy bosa or khalil mack go out or if he's just subbing in for one of those guys he will give you automatic relief and he will get to the quarterback he has an amazing power rush stance and he has an amazing bull rush as well when he gets his head into the tackle he's going to push them back into the quarterback rarely ever does he get overpowered by a tackle or gets overpowered in the run game the only thing is is that sometimes in the run game he does get moved out of the pitcher but he's still fighting mostly because he's just a perimeter pass rusher at this point if you can develop that run stopping ability and let him be a little more patient and he just doesn't jump off the sides as soon as they snap the ball just be a little more patient this guy can be an elite run stopper as well this would be a steal if the los angeles Chargers can get this kid with the 85th overall pick 122nd overall pick out of them selecting Dalen Henley, linebacker from Washington State. Standing at 6'1", 230 pounds, excellent playmaker at the linebacker position. And this fills a need for the Los Angeles Chargers. They have a defensive-minded head coach in Brandon Staley who would love to have this type of kid. Has been a leader of the defense of Washington State the past couple of years. 74 total tackles, 1 interception, 10 quarterback hurries, 3 quarterback hits, and 5 sacks.
The only thing that is negative with him is that he is easy to block at times out of the run game because of how small he is. Like I said, he's only 6'1", 230 pounds. So if a center or a guard that has a lot of power or that can be a roll raider goes down the field and they get hands on him, it may get ugly in the run game. When we talk about covering running backs out the backfield and sideline to sideline speed and being a violent rusher, he can do that. He is very deceptive with his power moves at times. That's why he can get to the quarterback at a high rate. The only thing is, I say, it's just him against the run game. And I believe you can coach that up. Some In certain points of times in this season in Washington State, he played phenomenally well in the run game, but he was mostly used as a guy to cover running backs out the backfield, cover tight ends and cover wide receiver across the middle of the field he is almost excellent in coverage i don't want to say he's excellent just yet but he is almost there if he improves on his technique and the pass coverage and he doesn't hold the tight ends as much as next at the next level and it transfers over we're talking about a guy that can be a perimeter linebacker for years to come with this team and like i said at washington state he was the main nucleus of the defense of that team and they had a pretty decent defense at washington state and he was one of the best players on that team with the 153rd overall pick after the Los Angeles Chargers selecting another offensive alignment and Joe Tipman, interior alignment from Wisconsin. He is a center, but he has played some left guard, has played some right guard. This team needs depth on the offensive line, and they stay hurt. If I could draft them a new medical profession, a new medical crew, I would. But I can't do that. So they need to get a lot of guys that can go out there and just sit behind guys like Corey Lindsey. If his contract comes up, you don't want to resign him. You go out there and get a guy like a Joe Tipman. He can come in and give you some excellent production straight off the bench. 6'6", 317 pounds. Only allowed two quarterback hurries, one sack, and two quarterback hits. He's extremely physical, and he's a mauler at the next level. It does come with some penalties. To where you'll say he's holding or you say he's just being extra or is a legal man down the field you have to watch him on his rpo plays mostly but he's a guy that's going to get to the next level and get some linebackers out the way and get safeties out the way he's going to put them on the ground and he's going to maul them similar to what orlando brown jr did in the super bowl against Hassan Reddick, he is that type of tap. He's that type of center. Excuse me. That's how he plays the game of football against powerful defensive tackles. He doesn't do bad against. But when he goes against some of those speed rushing defensive tackles, if they do give him problems. They will push him back to, towards the quarterback, and he will improve his standing. Most of it is because he is still a raw prospect at the center position. But he will be extremely versatile if he's able to see the field for the Los Angeles Chargers. With the 186 overall pick, I have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting. Josh Wiley, tight end from Cincinnati. This team needs a tight end that can be consistent. Josh Wiley is an excellent pass protector. He allows zero sacks, zero pressures, and he did get some receptions on the season with 32 catches, 326 yards, and three touchdowns. They didn't throw the football as much this year to him, but he has shown a year past that he can catch the football and he can be a red zone threat for you. He will be Justin Herbert's best friend. And if you can match this up in the system with Jalen Hyatt, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen is just another weapon for your franchise quarterback and Justin Herbert. And it gives him another incentive to sign a massive deal and stay with this team. And with the last pick, the 217th overall pick for the Los Angeles Chargers, have them selecting Max Melton, cornerback from Rutgers. You're looking for depth here. He's six foot, played 577 snaps, six pass breakups, two interceptions, was solid in coverage, was decent at times. Like I said, he isn't a bad corner. He's very good and solid in zone coverage and also in man. The reason he's sliding this far is because of the experience that he had in college. He He's a guy that needs a lot of tooling and a lot of development. But I believe that Brandon Staley can come in and give this kid a lot of opportunity to learn and give this kid a lot of opportunity to grow as a player. And he's one of those type of corners that Brandon Staley would like to have going back to the days when he was a defensive coordinator for the LA Rams. So let me know in the comment section how you feel about this mock draft. I know a lot of people like to see Jordan Addison go in the first round, but I believe Jalen Hyatt has a higher upside than Jordan Addison and He's more of a need than Jordan Addison is. That's just my opinion. But I would not be upset if you wanted to see Jordan Addison go to this team in the first round or a guy like Josh Downs. So let me know in the comment section. Do you like the mock draft? What would you change? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, we want each and every last one, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Peace.